Welkom allemaal. Hallo. Hi. In Engels. Yes. Um, this is my session about storybook and layout builder. And um, today I'm going to tell you a little bit of how I think the two make a, a great combination. My name is Sean Bloart, uh, Sean B on Drupal.org. And I have been on Drupal.org for almost 13 years. And some of you might know me as well as the maintainer of the media and media library module in Drupal Core. I've mostly worked as a back-end developer in, the, in my career, but uh, since the last couple of years, I also focused a lot on front-end development, uh, in specific on front-end performance, and I've also done a lot of work in my recent projects on accessibility and UX. Um, in my latest projects, I've also started working with Storybook and Layout Builder, as you can imagine, and in client projects, you don't always have the time to do things as you think they should be. There's always this new feature that gets preference over what you would think would be nice. So in that uh, perspective, I started working on a new product together with uh, Wilfred, who's uh, in the front here. And uh, we were using Storybook and Layout Builder to uh, build the user experience that we think would be nice and just spend the time to do everything right. And doing that, we focus a lot on UX accessibility and performance. Um, and in this presentation, I uh, will show you the things that we did to get everything working and also the, the work that we did to improve what you get out of the box in Layout Builder and stuff. So, Layout Builder. Uh, by show of hands, who of you have already done a project using Layout Builder by any chance? That's a lot of hands. Okay, cool. Um, I remember back in 2015, I I had the first time where I had to build like this landing page builder where editors can use different components to create a, a really custom page. And that was even before paragraphs existed. So in that time we only had field collections. I don't know if some of you remember that module. So what we did was we added a lot of field groups. And in those field groups we added the fields for each different section type. And Using field collections, editors had to add a field collection, only fill the fields for the field group of the section you wanted to fill. And then the form got huge, and I think that's maybe the ugliest admin interface that I've ever built in my life. So when paragraphs module came around, I thought it was a really, really huge improvement. So that allowed editors to actually select a type before they started filling in the fields, and you only get the fields for that paragraph type. It was very nice, but when you get to nested paragraphs, you still have huge, huge admin forms, which are really a pain for editors to uh, find where they exactly want to change the text, for example. And when Layout Builder came, that was a big game changer, I think. So Layout Builder is a visual design tool in Drupal Core, which was added in Drupal 8.7 as a stable module. And it um, allows editors to build custom pages using sections and blocks. Uh, when working with Layout Builder and editors, we noticed that editors really find it very easy to use and quickly find the text they want to change and edit it. Um, so yeah, I, uh, I really enjoy working with it and uh, I think the content editors do as well. This is uh, an example of the interface. As you can see, well, it might not be that clear on the screen, but uh, there is uh, a way to add sections. And you can also add sections in between other sections, so that's also a big improvement over paragraphs out of the box. And when you add a section, as you can see in the right sidebar, is the, there's a way to select a layout for a specific section. Uh, by default, Drupal ships with uh, column layouts, and in this case, columns are called regions, and in regions, editors can place blocks. So when you enable Layout Builder for a, a, a node type, for example, um, Drupal provides a lot of blocks for your node type, so you can add specific fields to specific columns. But since blocks are very powerful in Drupal, you also have the, the power of all blocks provided by contrib modules or even build your own modules using your own custom blocks and give editors even more power and more freedom to build pages the way they think the page should look. 
This is an example of the Umami install profile using Layout Builder. So you have a recipe content type, for example. Within the recipe, you have an image field, you have some metadata, and editors are free to um, combine the metadata in specific columns and uh, build a recipe as they see fit. So then there's Storybook. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, I started working on a big project where we had to build a Drupal website within one year. And uh, yeah, it was a huge project, so what you do when you have a tight deadline and a big project, you put more developers on the project, which is always a good idea. So uh, I, I see some of the developers here and they're laughing. So uh, we had like 35 developers, I think, at the, at the height of the project, all working together to build a site in one year. And it was, of course, very fun to do, and we made the deadline, so the project was a success. But when we got to the maintenance phase, we noticed that it was not always fun to change things and update things. You um, make a change in the front end for one thing, and somewhere else on the site, something else broke. So um, yeah, we, we kind of noticed that it was not maintainable any longer, and we were looking for a solution to build a better front end, which would more, be more sustainable and maintainable. And looking at solutions for that, we found Storybook. So Storybook is a JavaScript-based component library. It allows you to build, document, and test components in separation. Um, so a component can be anything from a, a small button, but you can also combine components in other components. So for example, if you create a teaser component, which has an image, a title, a text, and a button, you can reuse the button component in your teaser component, for example. And you can even go further and build menu components, text components, and combine all those things with buttons in a completely new footer component. And you can even create example page components to go all out. So it, it allows you to uh, stack components on top of each other, reuse things, and but still have a clear separation of the responsibilities of each component. And uh, what that allows you to do is since you reuse existing components to create bigger UI elements, it allows to add a lot of consistency to the overall design and you don't have that one button has round corners and the other button doesn't. And it, it, it doesn't, it, it, uh, it helps to, um, yeah, provide consistency, basically. Um, what Storybook also helps you to do is uh, give you a separation of concerns. So uh, Drupal is uh, a nice tool to create content, um, but it not, it's not necessarily a nice tool to do your front end in, as some of you front enders might have already noticed. Um, it also allows you to add or change components with less chance of regressions. So when you make a change in a component, the change should be limited to that component only, and it shouldn't change, uh, it shouldn't have undesired side effects, or there's less chances of that. It also allows you to build new features without needing a designer. So as a developer, you sometimes get a request to build a new page, and um, yeah, it, it doesn't always make sense to hire a designer to, to build the page first. You, when there are a lot of components, you can mix and match to create new pages, which makes it easy to build prototypes. And uh, another big benefit of Storybook is it allows you to share components between applications. So if you have multiple applications that need the same front end, they can all use the same Storybook. So when you change a, a button component, for example, it's automatically updated in all the uh, different applications that use that component. This is an, uh, a short video that shows the, what's, what Storybook looks like. So in the right you have some documentation, you have an example of what the component looks like. There are some settings that you can change for the, the component. So for example, if you want to choose a different style for this hero element, you can just change it and the style automatically updates. You can change the alignment, for example. It allows um, people that have access to Storybook to get a, a, a feel for what the component can do and what it looks like. And in the left side, you have a list of all your components so you can navigate between them. Um, this is not only very convenient for um, the developers, but also for editors who work on the site. When they start building content, they know 
which components there are that are available, what they look like, what are what their options are, and they can play around with it before they actually start creating their content. Um, how do you write a story? So in Storybook, components are called stories. And to add a, a component to Storybook, you need to write a story. Before you do that, it's important to keep in mind that Storybook uses Webpack. It's based on Webpack. And Webpack is an incredibly powerful tool. It supports all kinds of other tools like Dart, SAS, Post CSS, and Stylelint, for example, to make it easier for you to write CSS. There's the Terser plugin, which allows you to optimize and minimize JavaScript, for example. There are other tools to uh, load YAML files, JSON files to provide default content for your components. Um, I do have to be honest, Webpack has a steep learning curve. I've struggled with Webpack a lot, uh, more than I would like to admit, actually. But um, it, it, it does provide you a lot, with a lot of power, and it uh, does make things easier. And in the end, it's probably worth it. Um, it also, it, so since it's based on JavaScript, you can write simple JavaScript to define the story. I will show you in a second what it looks like. And uh, since Drupal likes to use Twig, uh, we made the decision to use Twig.js to render the HTML for our components, which makes it easy for Drupal to reuse the actual same Twig files that Storybook uses, and uh, they are not constantly fighting with each other. So what you do is you create a specific folder for a component, for example, a teaser or a card component. Then you add your JavaScript, your SOS files, your Twig files, et cetera, maybe some JAML files. You put it all in that folder, and then you create the magic file, which is the stories.js file. And in that stories.js file, you actually define what the component renders, and it looks something like this. I hope it's readable for everyone, but I will make the slides available if, if not. Um, so in the uh, top section, you can uh, export a default, which basically names your component. In this case, you can use a slash to actually group components. So we here have a, a group called components, and within that group, we create a card component. Then you can import uh, your Twig file, and uh, the Twig loader from Web Webpack with Twig.js makes this magic work. So you just uh, yeah, import the Twig file into a function called card template, for example, in this case. Then you can also import your uh, SOS files, which Webpack will automatically make sure that your SOS files, uh, when you configure the loaders correctly, the SOS gets converted to CSS. And in the end, you export the, the actual component and uh, return the card template function, which basically lets Twig.js render the Twig to actual HTML. And you can provide some variables to give more flexibility. And your uh, basic Twig file can look something like this. So you just have an article with an H2 element that uh, provides a label. Did I do something wrong? <laughs> But uh, do the HTML element that provides a label, then you have a div uh, that renders text. Um, so when you want to start using components in uh, Drupal, you uh, still have to do some things because you have now a storybook folder that contains uh, yeah, other small folders with components but somehow Drupal needs to know they exist and how to use them. In this case, I will focus on Layout Builder, since my talk is about Layout Builder and Storybook, but uh, Layout Builder wants to use blocks and, and likes to use blocks, so um, that's what we are going to do. And what you can do in Drupal is create custom block content types. They are fieldable, so what you can do is um, you create the fields that your component needs. In, the, in our example, we had a card where, where you have a label and a text, so you put a simple title field on it, and you put a, 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 like a WYSIWYG field on it. And um, then because the blocks are entities, you automatically get uh, Drupal templates for each entity. So you can have a specific block slash uh, or, or a dash um, block type name dot html dot twig file. And from that 
Drupal Twig file, you can call the Storybook Twig file, and which basically uploads all the rendering of the HTML and CSS to Storybook. So that looks something like this. On the first line of your uh, Twig file, you can attach the libraries for your specific component. Um, this is a little magic. I'll explain how this works in a bit. Then you can um, load the block entity from the content variable, which is always available in your uh, template. And then you can include the storybook Twig file in your Drupal Twig file. And which basically says, I don't care about this HTML, let Storybook do it. And when you do that, you pass the variables for your title field and your body field along to Storybook, so Storybook can use that content to actually create the HTML. As you can see in the example, there is this add components part when loading the Storybook Twig file. This is called a namespace. And um, I will explain that in a bit as well. So one, the first magic part is we had this attach library, which says we are attaching a library for the card component. Well, Drupal doesn't automatically know what CSS files or JavaScript files are part of your component. To fix that, we implemented a hook library info build, which basically scans the storybook directory for component directories and uh, reads all the CSS and JavaScript files, automatically create a library, a Drupal library per component, which basically allows you to easily attach the library for that specific component from your actual Twig file. The great benefit of doing it like this is that your page will only load JavaScript and CSS for the components that are actually on the page, which will keep the footprint of, the, of your page a little bit smaller than it has to, uh, than, it, than, it, than it should be there. Then there's the Twig loader. Uh, the Twig loader in Storybook um, takes care of actually converting or, or reading the Twig file from its location. Um, and the Twig loader supports namespaces. So if you use nested components, for example, you could have a teach component that says, I want to use a button here. And what you can do is use a namespace prefix so that when Storybook loads the specific component file, um, it will read it from a different location than when Drupal wants to read a Twig file. And namespaces make sure that Storybook has its own path to a component and Drupal can have another path to a component. And uh, to do that in Drupal, um, you need the components module and it allows you to define namespaces for your components. Um, this is a little bit much, but um, it basically uh, shows what a Twig loader looks like. It uh, tells um, Webpack to look for Twig files, and while doing that, we want to have the following namespaces defined. In this case, we have components, elements, and structures. You can also use atoms, molecules, and organisms if you want to. Um, it's up to you. You can define the namespaces you want. And then in Drupal, you do the same. You do that in the uh, team.info file. There you just define the same list of components and specify the, the path from your Drupal team to the specific component. And in this case, there's a storybook subfolder with a components, elements, and structures folder. And you just basically define the namespaces like that. And at this point, you have your front end completely decoupled from Drupal. Um, but while passing the data to Storybook, you still might want to do some processing. So what we used to do is um, we used the Twig Tweaks module to make sure that our variables can be um, yeah, processed. For example, if you have an entity reference field and you want to render, for example, a media element, an image or a video, you can use Twig, Twig, Twig Tweaks to actually render the media entity and pass the rendered component to Storybook. Um, you can use view modes to provide even more templates. So if you, for example, have a node, um, you can have a teaser uh, view mode, but you can also have like a search view mode. And there are different ways to render uh, a node, but you both want to have it done by Storybook. You can just create different view modes, which will then automatically give you different Drupal templates per view mode. 
And in your Drupal templates, you can call whatever storybook component you like for that specific view mode. Um, we clear the complete field UI when uh, we are doing this. And we do that because we want to reduce the complexity by skipping field formatters. Uh, what we've noticed in the past is that, when, especially when you use display suite as well, you have like display suite that wants to provide output, then you have your view mode or field formatters that provide output. Um, then you have preprocessors that try to uh, do something. Then you have your Drupal Twig files that do something. That's already like four places where you have to look where is the specific div, specific div coming from? And why is the output not behaving the way I want? So what we want to do is remove most of that complexity and just focus on the uh, preprocessors, then maybe pass some data to Storybook from the Twig template and have something there, but that's it. The rest is being done by Storybook, and Storybook just needs to know that the HTML or the data that that's receiving is already processed and already uh, already good. Um, and yeah, as I mentioned the, in the last part, uh, it only loads assets that are actually used on a specific page. So Layout Builder is uh, really cool, but when you install Layout Builder, it is kind of complex. It's, there's still a lot of interface elements that uh, yeah, you might not need as an editor. And um, while working on this, we created a list that, of things that we didn't really like about Layout Builder when you first install it. So when you add content to a page, add a block or something like that, you need a lot of clicks. So you need to add a section. Within that section, you need to add a block. Um, yeah, so then you have to look for a block that you want or a block type or whatever, then you click that. Then you have to fill in all the content, save it. Um, yeah, it, it's, it takes like five clicks to get something simple on the page. Um, then there is very limited default layouts. So you have like the multi-column layouts. Um, it's like one, two, three, four columns, but that's basically it. And you might want to do even more advanced stuff with it. Then you also have a problem that when you build components, not every component will look good in every layout. So for example, if you place a hero block inside a four column layout, it will not really look good, of course. And the other way around, if you have a simple card that's used for a multi-column layout, and put it in a one column layout, it will also not look very nice. Then there's not a lot of styling options for sections by default. I think when you add a multi-column layout, you can choose if you want to have like a 50-50 split or a 66% and 33% split, but that's basically it. So it would be nice to have more options, like adding a background color or a background image to a specific section to make it even look better. And um, it's also when you, when you see the list of blocks that you would like to add, there's no real visual way to choose it. You get like a list of the block type names, but not always, not all editors understand what a hero component is, or not all editors understand what a car component is. So it would be really nice to get a visual representation of a component before you add it to a page. Then there is the problem that Layout Builder provides all blocks um, by default. So when you add a new block, you get the complete list of all blocks that are in Drupal. And I don't even know what all the blocks do, but I can imagine that, that uh, editors have an even harder problem picking the correct one. It's not really possible to define permissions uh, on a block level or section or per, even per content type. So if you want to have a news content type that only should contain text blocks or image blocks, but no heroes or no contact forms or whatever, it's not really possible to do, to do that out of the box. And what we also noticed is that editors have a, like a hard time understanding what the difference is between an edit tab and a layout tab. So what do I edit on the edit tab or what do I edit on the layout tab? It's not really... Um, clear directly. 
And the last, but probably the hardest issue is styling a layout builder. Layout builder runs in the front end of your application, but it contains admin-like functionality. Your front end team probably doesn't have the styling of your admin team, probably shouldn't, but that um, directly poses a problem when you want to render an admin looking form or modal in your front end. But there are solutions for that, of course. So the first thing um, I would like to tell you about is how you can style Layout Builder. As mentioned, Layout Builder runs in the front end team and um, that makes it really hard to provide consistency with the admin team. And luckily there are people that already saw this and spent a lot of time um, getting that better. Uh, for the Jin team and the Claro team, there are modules you can install and which will automatically make sure that your uh, admin sidebar and your content forms look exactly like the admin team. It is very opinionated and sometimes your front end and that module will be fighting, but it will solve a lot of your problems out of the box. This is an example of the Jin admin theme and the Jin layout builder module. It, uh, as you can see on the right here, the, the complete form looks like it's a Jin form, even though this entire page is running in your front end. And uh, the same is applied to the, this top bar, the buttons here, and the lines, and the contextual links, and stuff like that. Uh, we took it even one step further, and we stopped using an admin team. What we did was we built a different storybook for our admin components. And um, now we only have one team uh, with two storybooks. One storybook for the front end components, one storybook for the back end components. And uh, whenever we want to render something, we just call a different storybook from our temp template. Um, I cannot recommend all of you doing this because this also gives you a lot of extra headaches. But it, it does provide you the ultimate control over what you want to see and how it should look. But for most people, I think probably the, the Jin Layout Builder module and the Claro Layout Builder module are fine. Some other quick wins you can apply to Layout Builder to improve the usability of it is just simply changing the names of your tabs uh, using a hook local tasks alter. So we chose to name the edit tab, uh, we called it metadata. And on this tab, you just only uh, provide a meta description and uh, the page title and the URL alias. And all the other content editing happens within Layout Builder. So we chose the, to rename edit to metadata and we renamed layout tab to edit, which made it a little bit more clear for editors what they are doing. Since most of the time they want to edit something, it's on the edit tab now instead of the layout tab. The Layout Builder Perms module provides you with uh, plugins that provide a lot, a lot of extra permissions to give you really fine-grained control over where people are allowed to add new sections or block types or where not. So you can say that for a news content type, you cannot add a hero, but for an article content type, you can. You can do that on a section level, on a block level. It, it, it does um, make Drupal grow the permissions exponentially because every time you add a layout and add a block type, it, it will exponentially grow. So I think in one of the projects, we have like 1,500 permissions or something just for Layout Builder. But it, it, does, it's, it doesn't make it slower, that helps. <laughs> we, did, we, did, we did some work to make the performance of that really, really good. Um, then there's also the possibility to, to disable the default layouts you get from Drupal, like the simple one, two, three, four column layouts. They are nice, but they are really limited. So I would probably uh, advise everyone to um, build their own layouts. I will get to that in a second. Um, then another quick win you can do is when users add new content. So you fill in your title and your meta description. You just redirect them directly to the edit page or the layout page uh, where they can um, 
create the actual content of the page in Layout Builder. And the Layout Builder page contains a Layout Builder form, which I think is looking kind of bulky. It, it, it has some buttons and checkboxes I don't think editors really need. So I would suggest you implement the hook form node Layout Builder form author to uh, clean that up a bit. Then there is adding layouts. This shows the out of the box experience when you start adding layouts. Um, so you add a section, here you can choose a layout. There you can choose uh, the column width, which is the only option you get by default. You add it and then you still have no, well, basically nothing. You have two columns where you need to add more stuff. Um, so it's a very good starting point, but it's still not quite there yet. Um, luckily, it's very easy to add layouts to, store, to, um, to Layout Builder. You can just write uh, a layouts.jml file within the module. And uh, for your layouts, you can define custom PHP classes. That, uh, that contain a form and uh, like a settings form for your layout. And in, like by default, you add like the, you can choose the column width for a layout, but you can add more stuff uh, in your custom form, like adding background colors, you can add background images, you can uh, choose the alignment, left, right, whatever you want, if, whatever your components support, you can provide that in your custom class, in your custom form. And another cool thing is when you add layouts, they also get their own Drupal template, which means that from your layout templates, you can also call Storybook. So you're not only restricted to using blocks, your layouts can use Storybook as well. Another cool thing we did in our project was provide a visual representation of the layouts directly in the Drupal interface. So we show a rendered component when you select a layout, instead of just printing one column, we actually show a visual representation of the component. We decided to map layouts to components instead of using just basic columns. So there are multi-column layouts, but they're still using storybook components. Um, we also decided that it would be a good idea to provide default content for editors when they uh, select and place layouts in a page because it automatically gives them feedback of what something is going to look like and they only have to change it instead of having this extra step of, oh, I need to add a block now. And what kind of block do I want to add in this layout? It's easier for them to actually get a set of blocks already and just change whatever it should be. So here's an example of the thing that we built. You uh, click the Add button. Uh, here you get a visual representation of all the different layouts that we have. So you have a hero element, for example, you have some cards. Uh, we build page titles, we build galleries, we build, you can build basically any kind of co component you want here. You just select one, and when you click it, you get the options for this uh, specific uh, component. So you can choose a background color, you can choose the, if you want to show the full screen or not, you can change the alignment if you like, and um, in the bottom you can even choose a, a different style. So for a hero we have like four or five different styles of heroes. You can do basically select the one you want and uh, directly add it to the page. And when you add it to the page, you, uh, you actually get this component directly added in your interface and you are free to change it however you like. It basically skips a couple of steps for editors and gives them direct visual feedback of what they are doing. So you still have sections and blocks. So we talked about sections and layouts a bit. Um, now I'm going to show you what Drupal does out of the box when you add a block to a section. Uh, this is the list of blocks and I kid you not, all the blocks that you get by default. I didn't even install any extra modules. So as you can see, there is a huge and huge list of blocks 
that editors can choose from, and I would not recommend anyone delivering this to a client. Then there in the top disk, there's, there's this button that says, you can also create a custom block. Uh, I only have one type in this installation, but here you get a form uh, where you can then add the content for your block and, and add it to a page. Um, so it, it, add, it has some extra clicks, but also a lot of confusion. And this is very overwhelming for uh, editors. A lot of the blocks that, you, that are in there, you probably won't even need. Uh, and there are a couple of ways to solve that as well. Uh, so you can use the block list override module, which allows you to configure which blocks are enabled in the layout builder interface and which blocks aren't. And there's also the layout builder direct add module, uh, which uh, will skip the step where you can select a, a block from the list, but you can directly add a custom block of a specific type to a specific region. Um, what we did, we took it one step further. We actually swapped the entire layout builder element and gives us to give us full control over each link in layout builder. So we can uh, basically also skip steps since most of the things that you want to do in layout builder already have working routes. We just change the route for any link that we wanted to change. And this is an example of how you can add a specific uh, block to, uh, an exit, to an empty uh, section. So here you have like the different block types that are supported by this um, uh, layout. Uh, let's say we add a card here. You already get the default content and you can change it however you like uh, and add it to the page and uh, be done with it. Um, when editing or deleting blocks, there, um, you can uh, improve the contextual links a bit, so we did that through styling. Um, and we also added Ajax to um, directly update blocks or directly push the changes you make in a block to Layout Builder. And we also added an extra block form mode to separate the block content from the block styling. So choosing whether to align something left or right is now on a different form than um, the pl place where you edit a title. And I also have a short demo video of that. So when you hover over this, these links that you see there are contextual links, basically what Drupal gives you. We added an extra form mode there. This is the style um, form mode that we added to the contextual links. So here you can change the background color for this card you can choose a different card style. We, uh, they, the card styles are coming from a YAML file in Storybook. Um, yeah, and you can basically uh, choose whatever you want, change it, and everything you change is automatically updated within Layout Builder. Then there's also the regular content form. This is the place where you just edit the actual content and text. Um, so the forms are really uh, small, concise, and uh, yeah, basically show editors what they are looking for directly without too much distractions. So that's basically um, yeah the things that we did for um, for the layout builder and to improve it. Um, when you want to do something like this yourself, you don't have to start installing and writing storybook and your components completely by yourself. There are a couple of starter kits I found that will have done, that, that have done a lot of work already for you. You can directly start using. I think Wingsuit is one of my favorites in this uh, effect. So they have a, a complete list of uh, working components that you can start changing in storybook already. They um, also have some extra modules that already integrate with Layout Builder really well it would give you a, a kind of similar interface to what I just showed you. Um, and they come with a Drupal team, a working Drupal team as well. Another extra benefit of this module is that it's, or, or this theme, is that it also integrates with the UI patterns module. And the UI patterns module allows you to link um, storybook components to Drupal entities from the user interface. So there's not a lot of coding you have to do. You can 
basically, uh, as a site builder, also start using the power of this without having to code too much, which I think is very, very nice. There's the Gesso um, Storybook Starter Kit, which also comes with a working Drupal team. I haven't used this one myself, but it looks very promising. Uh, Emulsify also um, works with Storybook, has a lot of components, and comes with a Drupal team. And the last one, I found this one last week. I haven't used it myself, but this one looks really cool as well. This one is not um, directly built with Storybook, I think, but it's also a component library that um, comes with its own Drupal team within the, I think it's on GitHub. Um, and it also looked very promising. There's a lot of people working on this one as well. So if you want to use components with Drupal, um, it seems like this one is also uh, good. So then one of the questions is probably, do I really need Layout Builder? The answer is no, not really. Um, using Storybook, it's not just good for Layout Builder. The approach work, works really well to team just about any entity. You can team your media entities, you can team paragraphs, whatever you want. And even if you use paragraphs with layout paragraphs, I still think a, a thing like Storybook or a component library really would help you um, yeah, provide, give you all the benefits that, um, that I just mentioned in the presentation. And even if you just team your notes using uh, Storybook, it will still be, it, it give you a lot of uh, benefits to completely decouple your front end from Drupal. Uh, to quickly summarize, uh, I think the combination of Storybook and Layout Builder is very powerful. The separation of concerns gives you a lot of stability. Webpack will make you cry. A lot of work needs to be done to, uh, to get the UX really great, but in the end, I think your editors will love you for it. And that's the end of my presentation. <laughs> Questions, yes? The sidebar, you have a preview of the posts in there? Yes. Uh, are those screenshots or actual? No, they are actually rendered uh, iframes of the storybook components. Yes. Oh. You will get a mic. <laughs> For the people at home. Yeah, we are recording this. So. That's the thing. Thank nice. you. Uh, yes. I know Storybook to uh, create components and render them to React or Vue.js. Yes. Uh, for example. Uh, what did you use in your project? Um, so we used Twig.js to uh, okay. render the HTML, yes. Um, tech, I had a discussion uh, this afternoon with you <laughs> um, um, about could you use React components? Yes, I really think you could. If you call a React component from your Drupal template, it would simply let React give, give the HTML back from, for, for your Twig file. But having a Twig in Storybook and Twig in Drupal it kind of made things a little bit easier, but using React or any uh, anything else in Storybook would also probably really work really well. Any other questions? Um, where does uh, Storybook sit in, uh, in your Drupal installation? Is it part of your team or somewhere else in your structure? Um, we chose to make it a separate uh, repository, but uh, when we do the build of the application, we check out the Storybook a repository inside the Drupal team in a specific location uh, so Drupal knows where to find it. But we do make, uh, we, we did make it a separate re repository so people can work on it with separate permissions and uh, yeah, so we, we get the, the separation of concerns even uh, in our uh, version control. Any questions? Yes. yes. Uh, you mentioned that Yes, it's about uh, translations. Uh, did you have any experience with uh, Layout Builder and translations? And does it work well when you have like the blocks and you uh, click on Edit, will it then display the translation and you can edit that? Or? 
Um, I think the translations work on the node level. So since Layout Builder is rendering a specific language of a node, you can make it that uh, the Dutch version of your node has a different set of blocks and layouts than the English version of your uh, content. So the, con con the translation is not really easy to make it one-on-one, -on -one, so editors do have to work for that. But in the end, it is possible to have two completely separate pages with translated content uh, in multiple languages. Are you using the static version of Storybook in your uh, Drupal template or uh, other files, only the Twig files, for example? Um, do you mean in the sidebar or? No, uh, to implement Storybook in your Drupal team. Um, so basically Storybook just provides a folder and uh, what Storybook does is completely separate from what Drupal uses. So Drupal just reads the folders yeah. uh, and uses the namespaces to uh, read Twig files or it knows where to find the CSS files that are built. But Storybook basically does its own thing to provide its own previews. So Drupal doesn't really know that it is working with Storybook. It just knows that there is a specific folder that contains Twig files and that there's another folder that contains CSS files, but that it's Storybook that's providing the Twig or the CSS, it doesn't really know that and it doesn't really has to know that. So you're, you're copying uh, the static files automatically probably, but... Um, no, there, so, um, we, so we have a build process where all the SOS files and JavaScript files are built into a, a dist folder and the dist folder is where the, the, the build results are, and Drupal just looks at the disk folder for CSS and uh, JavaScript, and it knows um, through the namespaces where to find the Twig files of the components. Okay. Any other questions? In the back, it's Mr. Boss from the Tell us, Boss. Yeah, so I was wondering actually, so what does a, uh, a layout ultimately get saved to? Is it as structured as paragraphs is? As in, are there separate tables with the definition of the layout that you built? Um, so uh, the, the actual result of everything is uh, stored not really that nice. It's a serialized array of block IDs uh, with the layout settings. So the actual layouts are not really structured. So it, it, it does say this, so this is a two column layout. Uh, it has these and these settings and it uses this block ID in this region and it uses this block ID in that region. And that's what gets stored as a serialized array in uh, a field in uh, your node. But the blocks are structured data and get saved to the block table in the end. Um, yeah, so I, I guess it would be nice to, um, to have that a little bit more structured, but I can also see that layouts are so flexible that it's probably not really doable to get a nice uh, a typed API for that. And uh, I can see why they kind of chose the, the shortcut. Okay, time-wise, we have to close. Okay, that's fine. And, uh, I want to make a, a call. Uh, at 4 o'clock there will be a group photo, so please make sure you're there at 4 o'clock. It's in about 10 minutes, so uh, be sure to be there. Yes, and uh, if anyone has more questions, please come find me. Thank you.